It's the second last time we're doing this. Yeah. Glad we finally figured out a system. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm Jim. I'm Ryan. And this is the Concept Crucible Podcast. And it's the challenge finale episode for this year. Yep. So this year's challenge was one cover song a month. On the last Friday of every month, we have mostly hit the last Friday of every month. Mm-hmm. Um, but we have done, up till now, 11 cover songs. Our last one will be coming at the end of December. Mm-hmm. And I'm pretty optimistic about it. I've been uh, doing some practicing, listening to the song, and um, I think I think it's going to sound really good. Like, I'm excited, because yeah. I haven't been doing either of those things. <laughs> so that tells me that I should. Uh, so the songs that we recorded so far, um, mm-hmm. we in January was Wagon Wheel. Mm-hmm. Uh, by Old Crow Medicine Show. Mm-hmm. We did Everlong by the Foo Fighters. For February, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Last Friday Night by Katy Perry. Yep. <laughs> uh, oh, Gone Away by Offspring. Old Apartment, Bare Naked Ladies. Yeah. Uh, what else? Throw the R away from the Proclaimers. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's that say? Crazy for Love by, by Carsey Blanton. Blanton. Yeah. Uh, Through Glass by Stone Sour. Nothing Else Matters by Metallica. Uh, I Crush Everything by Joko, and last month for November we did Ahead by a Century from the Tragically Hip. Yeah, so... Should we should we spoil what December's going to be? Uh, good, because I don't remember the name of it, I only remember the band. Oh. <laughs> uh, no, it's One Thing by Finger Eleven. Yes, yes. It just took me a second. <laughs> I was going to confuse it with One Gun by 5440. Oh, no, no, Because I used to play that with uh, another band a long time ago. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But, yeah, so we have... Together, Mm -hmm. and with the help of uh, Kaylee, Mm -hmm. recorded 11 songs. Mm -hmm. It's been been quite the year. I mean, the the whole impetus of this after last year's doodle and whatnot was to, you know, push ourselves. And it was a little bit of a challenge. Not really a challenge explicitly, but I felt challenged by, by Bob over in Scotland. Yep. Who uh, who was trying to push push me specifically because I was we, very reluctant. We jammed a bunch, and, yeah. and I think I, I hadn't really jammed a lot then either. But I, yeah, you were you were pretty nervous about it. You were pretty yeah. self conscious about it. And yeah, he was like, no, 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 you can do this. Yep, yeah. sitting there <laughs> in a circle of all of us, and he looks at me. He's yelling chord changes out. Yeah. I'm just like, oh, okay, I guess I could play a lot of this. I, all I have to do is just you know do quarter notes. I'll just strum quarter note patterns, and yeah. that was that was pretty much it. And so. After that, coming back, and it's like, you know, I've been, and I, and I think we said this when we kicked off the, the challenge of, I got really inspired by some of these YouTube creators who are putting out a song a week, um, you know, cover songs. Now, granted, they're doing metal and stuff, so it just sounds really good to me, but uh, I thought, you know, I think we can do this. You record music, and you write music, <laughs> and you're better at playing guitar than me, and, and so, yeah, I threw this crazy idea at you that we should try to... Record some music and, and see what happens. And I'm always up for something mad, so here we are. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it's been it's been a ride. It's been fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's been annoying. It's been hard. <laughs> um, there's definitely been some like some like compromise and, and reconciliation. Yeah. Um, but rather than doing an icebreaker, mm-hmm. uh, just like rapid fire, some some sort of quick one. So what was your f- favorite song? It's really hard to pick one favorite, and it's not just because of children. It's because there's so many things that I have favorites for. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Favorite overall. Yeah, favorite overall, I'm going to have to go with uh, Foo Fighters, Everlong. That is also mine. Yeah, it just it sounds so good. It's not the best sounding one that we have. That one, I think, still remains Crazy for Love. Um, but I think for favorite song... Yeah, ever long. Yeah, that was that was that was the. I mean, we talked about it in the check in where where you like soul read that guitar, <laughs> and but I'm also really happy with sort of how my vocals mm-hmm. turned out, having like basically never heard the song before that night. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, because you had sent me a scratch of it. You were trying to figure it out, finger picked, and you couldn't. And like the only thing that irritated me about it was you couldn't figure out how to get the. Uh, pre-chorus um, ascending pattern down yeah. finger picking yeah. and that's when I suggested it and started playing it and you're like you can play this you can just play this why, why are we having this conversation yeah, you yeah. can just play it and we're telling the same story again we've yeah. already checked, checked the previous uh, podcast hardest to record oh hardest to record um, I'm going to say gone away for two for two reasons I also agree with you. Yeah. That is the interesting thing. Gone Away, vocally, it was the hardest for me to do, and it doesn't sound 
great but vocally because it really is uh, bordering outside of like any natural range that I have. Uh, but it was the first time we added the lead guitar part. And when we went back to listen to it, I'm like, ah, yeah. It was definitely the first time we tried throwing another guitar over top of it. So I would say that was the hardest to record for me. Yeah, I, I think I, I agree with you, but for different reasons. I think that the Gone Away was hard to record um, in the sense that, like, it was the first time when our, our visions really clashed. Yeah. So, like, because like, you, your, your, like, cover song version vision is, like, let us make a copy of the original. Yeah. That uses our instruments and voice, yeah. and and mine is always like no, no no. Let us make an interpretation of the original yeah. that like has a bunch of the pieces, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, but arranges them and 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 sort of affects them in the way that we want and the way that works for us. Yeah, and uh, that was the first time where that like came into I think like that guitar solo and the elements there is like dramatic conflict. I'm like no no no, it'll sound good, and you're like yeah, but it but it won't sound the same. Yeah. Yeah, because I learned originally learned how to play that song because it's it's a punk song, so it's it's a bunch of you know A five or uh, A five. It's a bunch of um, you know fifth power chords where you know you throw down three fingers. You can even bar most of the chord, and you just move it up and down the neck on yep. different strings. And so I learned to play that, no problem. Then you come back and we have to figure it out more acoustically and whatnot. And it's just like no, it doesn't sound right. And you're like, well, it doesn't have drums either. Yeah. So it's not going to sound right to no matter how we do this so oh man all right uh most fun to record oh there's a there's a couple of them in there as well um last friday night i i think just because of how fun it is and it was just like the the figuring out the bass guitar and getting the wow in there it, it was just so much fun to record yeah I mean that that is mine. Mine is probably crazy for love. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was our second three person song because um, you were on the bass and I was on the the rhythm guitar, and it was really interesting to sort of fall into sync. Mm-hmm. Where it's a jazz song, you just you just make it up as you go mm-hmm. uh, on the right chords. And in the right time, and the time is a little, it was a little awkward, because there was a couple of time time shifts in there, mm-hmm. um, but with you keeping track on the bass, it, it actually turned out really well, and we, we rocked it out pretty quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, last Friday night was a good time. Nothing Else Matters was super rad. If you caught the Nothing Else Matters podcast, we'll link it in the show notes, but yeah, the bit with you and the guitar solo was super fun. Yeah. <laughs> so, lessons learned. Like what? Like like, I have learned a bunch of things over the past year of doing this. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm going to make you go first. Uh, well, really start an immediate obvious lesson that we learned is if you looked at the time it took us to record the first couple songs, and then how we recorded the last couple songs, the process has become so much more smooth and so much more straightforward. Like, Wagon Wheel took us a long time to record and a, and a long time... What else took us a long time to mix? I'm looking from the list. Um, well, Gone Away probably did, because yeah. like, we had to cut between two, two guitar tracks for the effects. But, I mean, if you look at, like... Well, Everlong's the, took a while. Yeah, Everlong's the exception because we banged it out in one night, and even Katy Perry was interesting. But yeah, uh, through glass, nothing else matters. Um, the I crush everything. The fact that three of us recorded three parts, uh, and we did it in, in, in an evening without any additional editing or um, mm-hmm. mixing afterwards, and even ahead by a century. That was the first time where we came back. For a second session to, to record. Yeah, to add some new fill guitar. Yeah, because uh, we, we listened to the mix down, and it's like, you know what? That opening guitar is really weak. I, you know, at first I was going to re-record it, and then I thought, instead of trying to re-record it, because it's trying to record it on acoustic guitar, I said, why don't we just add some fill notes in there to, to kind of fill out the, the soundscape, and it worked. So one lesson learned is just the process of, you know, having the hardware set up, uh, coming in, knowing what we're going to do, know how to record, because we would do um, a rhythm guitar and a vocal track to start, and then we would go back and sometimes re-record the rhythm if needed, but then we would re-record the vocals over top and mm-hmm. get rid of the original, and then we'd go back and fix stuff where we could, 
So it's just little incremental lessons. I think for me it was. I mean, I mean, the, the constant. The con. If this podcast has a moral, it is perfect as the enemy of done. <laughs> and and that's we're like well we can see it in all kinds of places. Like we showcased it in the in the nothing else matters solo. But there's a bunch of those spots where it's like, I can hear mistakes. Mm-hmm. But they're there, and I know that they're there because I made them. Mm-hmm. But when you have played the same thing like ten times in a night, mm-hmm. there's a, and and you only have one night to do it. Mm-hmm. You there's a point where you have to be like, okay, this is the best we're gonna get. Mm-hmm. Like I'm not a hundred percent on it, but I'm ninety seven percent, and yeah. that's got to be enough. Yeah. Uh, and I think like like working together and putting that pressure on each other too, where it's where, like with the solo bit, you're like, this is your last one, this is your last try. Mm-hmm. Either you get it, or we use one of the one of the better ones that we got from the previous round. Because mm-hmm. uh, I had some like low hanging fruit early on, like like wagon wheel. Wagon wheel's a no brainer mm-hmm. uh, when it comes to guitar. Uh, old apartment was pretty fun. Yep. Yeah. It's always a good time. Wagon Wheel, I think, is one of the ones that I, I dislike my vocals the most. <laughs> uh, but it's also the first one, and it was before mm, Gone Away, where, and I, we, I think we talked about it in a previous podcast about learning to commit, mm. you know, learning to sing and commit. Because, let's see, Wagon Wheel, I sung, the next month you sang, the month after that you sang, and then Gone Away, we came back for me. Yeah, like, I have succeeded on my goal, which is only sing four of these songs. Really? Yeah. I, I sing Everlong. Yeah. Last Friday night. Yeah. I crush everything. Yeah. And Head by a Century. Wow. I didn't realize I sang that many. No. I mean, that was that was Kaylee sang one. Yeah, it helps. Um, which is five, and you sang six of them. Yeah. Um, because that, like that was that was that was my whole goal was also like learn to take a step back mm-hmm. and not be the person who like I am I am a strong singer, but part of part of developing that is developing you into a stronger singer. Right. And that means that means creating space mm-hmm. and not always having it just be, well, Jim does the vocal bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, one observation that I kind of made over this process, uh, and I don't know how you feel about it, but um, I'm not a half bad producer when it comes to suggesting change, so changes. Like, I'm not saying that my vision you're, for the song is better, but a lot of times when we would be listening to something, it'd be like, that doesn't sound right, that doesn't sound right. And I would propose something, and it seemed to like a lot of the time fix the problems that we had mm-hmm. with what it sounded like. Yeah, like you, you, I think you come into it with a really strong vision, mm-hmm. and you, you, and you, you, you have this idea in your head of, of sort of how it's going to sound, and th- and that vision is good. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it's just a matter of, of sort of fussing with the audio to make that happen. Mm-hmm. Uh, mine, mine was definitely like like letting letting mistakes slide. <laughs> Um, or, or usually it is declaring the end of the night because I'm tired and I have to go to bed. Yeah. And it's, you know, two hours past my bedtime and we're still mixing a track. Yeah. No, there, yeah, there was definitely, again, going back to the perfect as the enemy have done, we'd be sitting there trying, trying, trying to make it work. And it's like, should we just re-record? No, no. Like just, no. (laughs) Mixing like seven seconds of audio. Yeah. Yeah, cut you know this guitar track from here, move it to here, put this there. Um, yeah, but now there's a there's a there's a bunch of sort of interesting. I, if I listen to the playlist available on SoundCloud mm-hmm. for free, uh, if I listen to it, I can like hear us learn stuff as we go, and that continues on through the second half mm-hmm. um, with stuff like Crazy for Love, with stuff like. Uh, through glass, nothing else. Nothing else matters. Was the first one where all I did was produce it. Yeah, it was yeah the first solo for me. Like not first guitar solo, but yeah, I laid down the the guitar and then the vocals. Yeah, yeah I still regret "Head by a Century" as while while it turned out great as a cheater song. Like I've been singing that song since it came out. <laughs> I was hearing it on the radio and like that's it's in my veins. Yeah, but I think that was part of it too. Is it's an exploration of in some ways like songs that are personal to us and in some ways like like particularly like this is this is mostly your challenge like songs that are personal to you yeah i, I um, agree with that like uh wagon wheel was a pick from sarah yep. your fiance yeah 
Um, Nothing Else Matters is like the song that is written on your heart. Stone Sour is a collaboration between some of your favorite Mm -hmm. musicians. Mm -hmm. Um, There's a bunch of sort of like 90s classic rock in there, like The Offspring. Yeah, The Old Apartment is uh, the first uh, Bare Naked Lady song that I sang at... Sorry, it was the first Bare Naked Lady song that I learned to sing at at karaoke. Mm -hmm. Just Mm -hmm. because... And you know what? It's because of that opening G chord. Yeah, cra- cra- crazy for love was like a thing that we had initially wanted to do anyway, and then worked it into the, the challenge. Yeah, um, and the last couple have been just like just for me. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean, like in in so far as like this podcast is an examination of our lives and friendship, um, that playlist is is an examination of like the history of you and music, mm-hmm. and your your relationship with particular songs, which I find really interesting. Like this is this is the in many ways, it is the Ryan Huckle mixtape. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I, I buy that. You know, it's it's going to be twelve songs in the end. That's that's a healthy mixtape. Yep. Would you say it was forty nine minutes or something? 40, oh, I don't forty minutes, that. something like that. Yeah, it's it's enough. One thing that surprised me today, that as we were prepping for this, was the number of plays on which songs. Mm. I did not anticipate that. So just based on pure number of plays, the number one played song by a wide margin has gone away. So, so, and I will follow that up with, we have done essentially no promotion on any of these. Like, I, no. I Twitter about them. Yeah. And I Facebook them. And they, and the newer ones, uh, now that we have the Patreon, they go up on the Patreon. Mm-hmm. Um. But uh, but they go up as as, as open posts because they're available for free. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I. It's probably the tags. I mean, it's got to be the tags. But yeah. it's really interesting that that like nothing else matters is probably one of the lowest. Then it makes sense, I suppose, because there's so many probably so many covers of nothing else matters. Yeah. Um, but some of the stuff that we covered is probably stuff that no, and not a lot of people cover. And gone away. Like there's a lot of stuff in there that I listened to that I did. You know, with the guitar fill on the singing and stuff. Where I'm kind of like, oh, like it, to to compare that with the pure number of plays was was kind of surprising. Two hundred two hundred and fifty plays is also not a lot. I but mean, relative, like, millions of people on the that internet. doubles. That that is more than the other two. Like so, number one was gone away. Number two is Last Friday Night with just like 103, 105. Mm-hmm. And the month after Gone Away was The Old Apartment, and that was 100 plays. So you combine in the number, th- like you combine number three and number two, it's still not enough to make the can number I, can one. Can I break spot. your heart for a moment? I know you listen to them at work. No, no, that's not why. Oh, that's okay. not why. Um, the most played song on my personal SoundCloud um, that I've recorded is my Greek alphabet song. <laughs> um, it has thousands of plays and all it is is a song that teaches you the Greek alphabet uh, that doesn't break my heart that actually, <laughs> actually is like, like pretty you, cool you can never tell and it never yeah. makes sense but here we are yeah so those those are that was something that surprised me that level of the analytics mm-hmm. um, I think I, I commented on the in the pre-show that I find the back half of this it, to be I'm more satisfied with the back half of the challenge in terms of the last six songs versus the first six. But the first six were a lot more learning and figuring out the process and Mm -hmm. um, learning to be more confident with singing and playing the guitar. I mean, case in point, Everlong, the only reason why I pulled that out is because I had taught myself the riffs from Guitar World six years prior. Yeah. Right? So you played Wagon Wheel. You played Last Friday Night. You played Gone Away. I played Old Apartment. Actually, yeah, you did that. Uh, you played Throw the R Away. I played Bass, and you played Guitar for Crazy for Love. Through Glass, you played Guitar. So Nothing Else Matters was the first one where I took the reins on the on the guitar. That's true, yeah. And then I Crush Everything, I, I learned that. So it took, like, February notwithstanding, it took until September for me to, to, to run with the, the guitar part. Hmm. Uh, with the the full guitar part again, like gone away. I had the um, the guitar fills in there, 
So yeah, it was all about building courage and building comfort within yourself, and I think it shows in in song seven through and twelve. I'm I'm very optimistic and and confident that song twelve is gonna be is gonna sound alright. I'm excited. Yeah. So now that you have this courage, mm-hmm. now that you you have this experience, now that you've um, embraced your musical self. Mm-hmm. What is your bold? What is our your bold future here? To never play guitar again. <laughs> Unacceptable. <laughs> um, there, I thought about this because um, there was the joke at one point that we go back and re-record all the songs as slow jams. <laughs> so we'd have we'd have a side, b side, um, <laughs> b side, it'd be double the length. Yeah, yeah, everything would be super slowed down. Um, I also have thought about going back, like picking the songs that I really want to perfect, and and seeing if we could do a, a much more polished take on it. Because like, so I guess the the bold new future is um, we've got the basics down. It'd be interesting to add the complexity of, mm-hmm. you know, like we. So the most complex songs, uh, nothing else matters. Use both an acoustic and an electric guitar in it. So actually, uh, Gone Away did too. Um, but running, uh, running the the guitars maybe through pedals to change the sounds a little bit, um, fiddling around more with harmonies or separate parts. Like so, my, my favorite part of Nothing Else Matters was you brought your own electric mm-hmm. for it. Like I have, I have an electric. I have this cheap ass Squire mm-hmm. um, that I got specifically to play like Rocksmith and stuff. Mm-hmm. But uh, you brought in your own electric. And I was reminded of, so I used to I used to play in a band with a three year old, mm-hmm. and uh, he I was I was babysitting him, and he was our lead singer. He wrote all our songs. They're on my SoundCloud. They're super. I think they're still on my SoundCloud. They're super hilarious. Mm-hmm. But uh, um, one day he showed up with a with a recorder, and he's like, "I'm going to play this recorder in our band." I'm like, "100 percent, yes, you are." Um, so we recorded some uh, some some new songs with a recorder added mm-hmm. and it was that moment where you like turned up on my doorstep with a guitar you're like I'm going to play this guitar in this in our Metallica song I'm like 100% yes <laughs> yeah um, what oh the the other thing is um, unlike the doodle challenge the, when, when the doodle challenge finished I was kind of happy to, to close the book on it but don't get me wrong I want to I have like this weird bug that I want to start trying to learn how to paint. You know, I tried it in high school and didn't do very well, but now for some reason I've watched enough YouTube people to it's kinda like this this challenge. This, <laughs> this challenge, is exactly how this started. Yeah. So I, I kinda wanna learn how to how to paint a little bit. Um, but so there's there's that kind of connection, but with the doodle challenge, yeah, it was fine. I, I finished it, I finished, you know, three hundred and sixty six doodles. It was um, time to close the the book on it. This challenge, I'm not saying we need to continue it, but it wouldn't it wouldn't be the most terrible thing in the world maybe, to continue. Maybe it. we'll see you in a Wutsu Ride stage show sometime. Maybe that that would be a bold new future. Is is playing it live? You, know, you got to commit. You I, gotta... I will. So so I will 100 percent warn you right now, mm-hmm. and I think I've warned you this before. Mm-hmm. But if you are, and th- th- and I have done this to other people, like I anybody in the, like like. This is a warning that I give to anybody that I've ever played with, is if I catch you in the audience of a show that I'm doing, your ass is getting on stage and you're <laughs> you're singing with me. We we we've got Andrew Butters singing at Headshots, and 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 the reverse is also true, which is how I wound up singing a, a, a slow jam jazz version of Trogdor at the Geek Art Show like five years ago with an old bandmate. Um, but yeah, no, it's... We've already established that I would come up on stage to do Everlong with you. Yes. And then you would sing a head by a century and assist me with the, the slide on the G-string. Right. So we've already established those are two songs that will probably <laughs> carry forward in time. No, I'm, I'm excited for this. Uh, like, I've got sh- to do some, some focus shifting when it comes to recording mm-hmm. in the new year. But, uh, and, and sort of get more disciplined about that. Mm-hmm. But I am excited for everything that we have done and where it goes from here. Mm-hmm. 
And I think the final bold new future is to go back to Scotland and make old Bob proud. Conquer, conquer Scotland musically. With our axes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So, yeah, you can find the, poly, the, the playlist in the show notes. Mm-hmm. Uh, the last song will be out at the end of the month. And who knows, maybe drop a request in the... the in the comments and we'll come out of retirement in the future to record more cover songs not a jukebox Ryan yeah wow well. actually the, it's been pointed out that the key difference between me and a jukebox is you do have to put money in a jukebox before it will play any music for you <laughs> so I guess leave your requests in the comments yeah um, alternately leave them on Patreon uh, mm-hmm. you can support our work our streams and uh, our videos and our music and everything like that on Patreon uh, you can find us on Twitter, on Facebook, and all kinds of things. And uh, all those links are down on the doobly doo. Mm-hmm. We're super bad at talking about them. We are. <laughs> We're terrible at self promotion. But uh, or any promotion at all. Yeah. But no, the, the this challenge. As somebody who resoundingly failed their challenge last year, this challenge has been a hell of a ride. Mm-hmm. Oh man. And uh, yeah, new and different things to come. Yeah. But uh, for now, I'm Jim. I'm Ryan. And we're signing off. Stay awesome. Ran out of steam. You're a weirdo.